Hello and welcome to this video. If you are interested in building advanced water rockets, there is one component of the rocket that is critical to its success. The pressure vessel. In this tutorial, we want to show you how to build a very strong and reliable one. Before you can get started with the construction, you should definitely have an idea of how your water rocket will look like. We recommend you to watch our video that explains the different methods of construction and what's important when it comes to building a water rocket. Regardless which method of construction you go for, the principle of building the pressure vessel is always the same. Multiple plastic polo sections are combined together. However, not all plastic polos can be used for water rocketry. The bottles should be as strong as possible and should have a long cylindrical section. In this video, we are using bottles from Apollinaris, but these bottles are maybe not available to you, depending on your location. There are many ways to combine the bottle sections. The most popular one is to cut off some parts and glue them together with polyurethane-based adhesive. You can also put together multiple pressure vessels by using specific connectors. In this video, we are going to build a pressure vessel with 6 joints. However, the method of construction and the number of joints can be adjusted to your liking. But first of all, you have to prepare the bottles. Cut off both the lower and the upper sections, but leave two bottles out and remove only the lower section from them. When cutting off the sections, it is useful to mark the areas with a marker pen and a piece of paper. You can also use a jig consisting of a drilling machine and a cutter. It is very important to ensure an even cutting edge. To combine the bottles together, you have to shrink them on one side. The bottle type we use in this video is a little bit conical and so we choose the slightly smaller side. But before you are ready to shrink the bottle, you have to turn it on a hot iron. To shrink it, just put the bottle sections in about 2.5 cm or 1 inch deep hot water. Depending on the water temperature, the process will only take 1 or 2 seconds. If you wait too long, the bottle will shrink too much. Always keep in mind that it is important that you shouldn't be able to put the sections together too easily. If this is the case, you should replace the section before continuing with the next step. Before you glue the bottle sections together, you have to sand the shrunken areas on the outside and the other bottle ends on the inside. Furthermore, you should also clean them. We recommend polyurethane based adhesive to glue the bottles together. But watch out, not every adhesive is suitable for building water rockets. For example, we have good experience with PL Premium. Other adhesives like Cycaflex 11FC are very good to seal something, but not so much for holding together a rocket chamber. Nevertheless, you should choose this adhesive if you plan to reinforce your rocket with fiberglass or carbon fiber, because the reinforcement will hold the vessel together while the adhesive seals the joints. Thus, the pressure at launch can be increased up to 18 bars or 260 psi. We recommend using a jig which holds the chamber in place. It is very important to wear gloves because you should not come in contact with the adhesive. We also suggest opening all the windows. Now you can start applying adhesive on the sanded bottle areas. Be very careful when sticking the sections together and do not twist the sections while doing so. You can reuse some of the excess glue for the next section. If you have joined all bottle sections together, rotate the pressure vessel to make sure it is not crooked. After that, wait at least 2 or 3 days before you continue. In case you don't plan to reinforce your rocket, you can now proceed with the pressure test. We explain how that works later in this video. But if you plan to reinforce your rocket, we still have a lot of work to do. The whole chamber has to be sanded. To start with the reinforcement of your pressure vessel, 
You have to cut the fiberglass to size. We recommend using two layers of fiberglass. That means that the textile has to be wrapped two times around the chamber. Thus, the dimensions of the required fiberglass are length of the chamber to 6.4 bottle diameters. Be very careful when cutting the fiberglass because you do not want to pull out fibers from the cloth. At both ends of the fiberglass we cut in little stripes so that the reinforcement can fit tightly at the ends of the pressure vessel. To reinforce it you once again need a jig to hold the vessel in place. The resin is mixed in the ratio given on the packaging. Keep in mind that you should wear gloves and open the windows. After that the resin can be applied to the pressure vessel using a roller. In case the bottle type you use has any patterns or notches, you can use single fibers to fill them and make the surface of the chamber more even. Now you can start wrapping the fiberglass on the chamber. For that, lay the cloth very carefully on the pressure vessel. Use the roller to press the applied resin on the chamber through the fiberglass until it's see-through. Every now and then you may have to add some resin. However, keep in mind that you shouldn't use too much. Be very careful at the ends of the pressure vessel. After completion, we suggest wrapping a single fiber around the thinnest part of the bottleneck. Wait at least a few days before continuing with the pressure test, we even recommend waiting a week. But that doesn't mean that you can't do anything in this time. You can remove protruding fibers and you can sand, if necessary, parts of the vessel using wet and dry sandpaper. Now that your pressure vessel is nearly finished, you just have to test it before you can use it for your water rocket. For that, fill the chamber almost completely with water and put it behind a barrier. You can use your launch pad to build up pressure, or you can build a dedicated system for it. A reinforced pressure vessel can hold up to 18 bars or 260 psi. Most pressure vessels without reinforcement can hold about half that. You should definitely test the chamber to a higher pressure than you plan to use it on your rocket. If your chamber has passed the test, it is ready to be used in your rocket. We hope you enjoyed this video and that we were able to help you. If you want to learn more about the other water rocket components, check out our YouTube channel and our website. We'll see you next time. Your Rocket Fuel Team.